What's up, everybody? This is Michael Davis, aka Adrian Black. Welcome to my review of AEW's All Out. Now, I know a lot of people are so on social media have been going back and forth talking about how NT UK Takeover was better than All Out. Now, don't hit, don't at me on this. Don't hate me in the comments. I don't follow NT UK. Like most of these, no, most people, people, people do. I mean, I don't really follow that mu that much of UK wrestling anyway. So I know there's a shock, but I just don't. I know that Kaylee Ray beat uh, Tony Storm for the UK Champions Women Championship. I know that Mandrews and Flash Morgan Webster, who look like he he's uh, Austin Powers' long lost son. I know they're the new tag team champions, but I really didn't. We really, really don't really care about NT UK. I'm sorry, I just don't care. But what I do, what I do care about is all out AEW. This so it was a pretty damn good show. I mean, it was long as hell, but it was it was still a pretty good good show. The crowd was on fire from start to start to finish. I mean that that's that's Chicago for you. Chicago, quite possibly one of the best uh, best cities to hold wrestling events. I, I just that just me. Good. Every time you have a show over there, doesn't matter if it's WWE, NST, AEW, they always on, on on fire. That's just me. But I want to talk about uh, my my opinions on this on on this show, my thoughts on the show, right? With the good, the bad, and the meh. Starting off with the casino, women's battle royal. Now. I gotta got admit, this was better than, than the men's battle royal happening, that happened at uh, Double Nothing. They still need work on the, the camera angles when they when the wrestlers come out to the ring. But other than that, it was it was pretty damn good. You have the the, the, the signees of AEW. You got Allie, you got Nyla Rose, Britt Baker, Reed Priestley, um, Sadie Gibbs, who finally made her, her AEW debut. So she should have made her debut a long time ago, but I digress on that. And he also got this the the one off appearances from the the from Ely's, Jazz, ODB, Tino Daswood, Priscilla Kelly, yeah the the bloody, bloody tampon bitch. Y'all and you also have Till Piper, the, the daughter of White Right Piper. Now she wasn't really part of this match that much. I mean she did get a huge reaction from the crowd. But she really didn't, wasn't even part of wasn't part of this match for that long. I think she was part of the match for like five minutes before she got tossed out by ODB. But I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna sit, I'm not gonna you know bury her on uh, on her performance because it was a battle royal. You don't really, you don't really do much in a battle royal, so I'm not gonna bury her on that. I'm gonna judge her on her work when when she when it comes to her being loud. That's when I really, really gonna like you know scout scout her and see how how she does. Other than, other than uh, last night, have no issue with her with her performance, but she does, she does, she does need to step it up when it comes to her being part of WOW. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. But we did have the Joker, the 21 uh, entry of the, the mask, and it was a Tessa Blanchard, it was a uh, Skull Perdo. Hell, it wasn't even uh, Kylie Ray, a girl who was from Chicago, Illinois. And a girl that we haven't seen since uh, Double Nothing. I don't know where, where she's been, but it would be it would have been cool to see her come 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 back at the last spot, last spot. But we got somebody better than all three of those ladies. Well, maybe not Tessa Blanchard, but you, you know what I mean. What we got here was quite possibly one of the greatest women wrestlers of all time. One of the greatest women wrestlers that never signed a major contract. To a major promotion. I'm talking about the Latin sensation, Mercedes Martinez. Now, if you haven't seen any, any Mercedes Martinez matches, if you're going to be the, the, that dumb Mark Tar that says, I, who, Who's Mercedes Martinez? I don't know, never heard of her. Was he, in, was he in WWE? Do some fucking research and go watch some uh, Mercedes Martinez matches, and you, you would know that this, this Mercedes Martinez is, is that bitch. You would find out that she is one of the best performers in that ring. She can be a wrestler. She can be a coach. 
She could do it, do, do anything for, for um AEW. She could be both wrestler and a coach. Sign her to an AEW contract will definitely give your women division a, a, a boost. That's, that's my, my opinion. But going to the back to this match, you have Nala Rose winning the Battle Royal with a little help from um, B. Priestley taking out a uh, uh, Brick Baker. So we know that uh, Baker and Priestley will be continuing their feud down the road. And Nala Rose will have, have an opportunity to see as the first, first contender for the AEW Women, Women Championship. And she will face the winner of the next match I'm going to talk about, Rio and Ikuro, uh, the other, other uh, China, uh, Japanese chick, I don't, I, I don't want to botch her name, but so, I was like, I'm still going to call her, um, um, uh, uh, Japanese wrestler number two. I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a racist, but I don't know, I don't remember her name, I don't want to botch her name, so I'm just going to call her by, uh, Japanese wrestler number two. You got Rio picking up the win here against Japanese wrestler number two. You kind of figure that she got to pick up the winning winner here. She's been part part of AW ever since the first show, Double Nothing, and she been she been doing a, a hell of a good job. She did a great job in this match against Japanese wrestler number two, and I really I'm looking forward to see how she does against Nyla Rose. I mean I know they they face off a little bit in the the triple threat at the Fire Fest, but I, I, I look forward to seeing her wrestle. Against Nyla Rose one on one, and I must I I don't want I want want to see Nyla Rose as uh, the first women's champion for AEW, and not because he's transgender, he about punk breaks on that, not because of that. I just don't like like I'm not really a big fan of her. I do think she she needs a lot more work in the, in the ring. But that does me. But I really look, look forward to this match October second. First show uh, on TNT, Washington DC. It's really, it gonna be uh, very interesting. Now, before I go on to the, to the other, other matches, I gotta say this right now. I didn't watch the Master Train, uh, SCU and uh, the Jungle Book. I didn't watch the. I didn't. I really, really, really paying attention to the Master Train, Private Party and uh, Helico and Jack Evans. And I would really, really, didn't really pay attention to the Master Train. Um. The Dark Dark Order and uh, Best Friends. I did, did find out that freaking Orange Cassidy got involved in that match. And I fucking hate Orange Cassidy. You know, I know a lot of people hate, like like him. I know a lot of people love Orange Cassidy, but I don't I don't get a fucking gimmick. I don't get it. I mean, he's supposed to be this cool kid from high school that, that nobody nobody knows that he's cool. Like, it, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But... I did talk. I, I do want to talk about the next match I, I, I saw on, on this card that I, I was really, really look for, looking forward to. And that was King Omega versus the Bastard Pac. And I know a lot of people were looking forward to uh, Master versus Omega, but let's let's just be honest. This match kind of blew out, blew a uh, Master versus Omega out, out of the water, in my opinion, because. These two no matter do these two went primarily around there is just kick kick the little shit out of each other. And it was a spot in this match where King Ame was doing his um uh back leg leg drop uh thing from the standing leg drop and Pac did a fucking front flip and just it just it didn't even phase him. He just like just like did a front flip like hey, yeah, what's up bitch? <laughs> he he just I don't, I don't think not a lot of people realize how good Pac, Pac is. I mean, this guy was pretty much leveled down to a freaking cruiser rate. He could easily could have been a light heavyweight fighter fight for the IC title in, the, in WWE. I mean, this guy is so fucking good, and he's he showed how good he was against one of the best wrestlers in the last uh, three or four years in King Omega. And surprisingly enough, some, for some people, King Omega passes out. From the rings of Saturn, from Pac. That's right, folks. Pac defeated King Omega. Now, I know. I, I mean, I, I, there's some jokes on social media on on YouTube saying talking about, uh, Pac, 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 Pac probably um uh, begged uh Cody Wilson to have him win a match against King Omega. 
Maybe, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. All, all I know is, Pac defeated King Omega. That's all, that's all you need to know, need to know. Pac defeated Omega. Need I say more? No, I thought so. Anywho, next match I want to talk about is the triple threat match between Jimmy Havoc, Darby Allen, and the bad boy, George Danilo. Now this, this this match was was sponsored by um Cracker Barrel, <laughs> and as much as I'm a fan of Cracker Barrel, it seems like the the elite have a hard on for Cracker Barrel. Cause you have a Cracker Barrel showed up at All End last year, you had a Cracker Barrel showed up uh, at uh, Double Nothing, and you had a Cracker Barrel being used being used in this match, damn near killing Darby Allen. <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean I, I don't have anything you know. The bat, I mean, they bad about this, this, this match. It was a very hardcore match. The body flying everywhere. Mainly, um, Darby Allen, because he pretty much don't, pretty much been thrown like a rat dog. <laughs> but, you know, I'm kind of happy that Jimmy Havoc won the match here. Uh, because he really didn't need a, a, like, a, a win. Any kind, any kind of win. Because there's a, there's a kind of type of guy that might be, uh, we reduced to being uh, like a special attraction, only be a part of hardcore matches like death matches, because I don't see him being in a up up there in the in the world championship picture and with the with the likes of uh Kate Chris Jericho or Hangman Page, Cody Rhodes, um King Omega. I don't see him. I don't see him in that caliber of you know world champions, uh world championships champion contenders. Just, just me. Not, neither uh, do I see it, see it happen with um, Darby Allen or uh, Joy Danilo. I don't really, we don't see those guys being world championship material in the AEW. Just me. Next match I want to talk about was Cody Rhodes versus Sean Spears. As, as you know, as you know, Sean Spears being accompanied by Tully Blanchard. One fourth of the greatest faction of all time, in my opinion, the Four Horsemen, and you have Cody, Cody, Spock, Rose, with the Star Trek theme uh, entrance, alongside DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, and MJF, Master of Jacob Fuckface. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know, I know a lot of people have a hard on for MJF. I'm not a big fan of him. I mean, I think he's a little punk and acts, acts tough. In front of the cameras, when I, I think that he, he I think he type type of guy that acts tough in front of the cameras, and when he faces face one on one against some freaking Adrian Brown, he he probably uh cry cry a little like cry cry like a little bitch. That's that's just me. I think he'd be punked out by Adrian Brown. Just me. But anyway, this match was it was it was pretty decent. I mean I wouldn't I'm not gonna say it was, it was a great match. Cause it was a lot. Of, it was a lot. A lot of things in this match I didn't, you know, like it that much. One of them being, Cody was being a, being a little a mark for himself, doing a, a freaking os, os cutter. But why? Why the fuck are you mark mocking them a uh, wall spray? Why the hell are you you over here? Um, pretty much. Don't pretty much. He, there's a. It was pretty much a, a most of most of this match was pretty much a triple H match. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I know I'm gonna get, get a lot of heat for this, but it would it, it would remind me of Triple H having all this backup at ringside, having all this antics going on here at ringside, you having Tully Blanchard for face going on one on one against uh, MJF like a little scuffle, you having um, referee being down for like five minutes, you having R. Anderson come out and hitting Sean Spears with, with a freaking Spine, spine Buster. As much as I, as much as I, I, I like it and respect on Anderson, there was no need for him to be in the match. And of course, he won the match here. Cody was win the match, and I don't, I don't have a problem with him winning the match. But most of this match was pretty much him being a mark for himself, and him being pretty much the young version of Triple H. Need a backup. Need to have all this, you know. Having all these antics going on during the match, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I got get a lot of heat for this, but that is, that is my opinion. But 
I, I did like the, the fact that Cody won the match here. I don't think this, this field between um, Cody Rose and Sean Spears is over. I think they got to have one more match um, at the, the next pay-per-view or at uh, the, when they have their shows on TNT. But the, this feud with, with Sean Spears and, and Cody is now over. And I don't think I wanted to be wanted to be over at this at the moment. Speaking of not being over, fuse not fuse not, not being over at that is. The young the, the young bucks, the Los young bucks, versus the loser brothers for the Triple A Daddy Championships in a ladder match. And man, oh man, this match was the shiz net. I just before before I, I go on to the spots that happened in, in this match, I see a lot of people saying that this this was on par with the ladder match that happened at WrestleMania 17. I don't know about that. I mean. WrestleMania 17, that TLC match was very iconic. It, it was very one of the best matches in WrestleMania history. I think it's a little bit too soon to, to say that this is up there with um, WrestleMania 17 TLC match. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm not saying it, is a, it, was, it was a bad uh, ladder match, but I think it's a little bit too early to, to talk about this match being up to par of the ladder match, TLC match we saw at WrestleMania 17. With the Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys, and as a Christian, so that's, that's just me. But this match, I, I think this, this deserve deserves to be like seven stars in my in my opinion. This match was insane. You are having freaking Mexican destroyers all over the place. You having you have a uh, Pentagon and Phoenix in their fence here on one of the young bucks on a ladder. Pentagon doing a Mexican destroyer from off the ladder through a table on one of the young bucks. That might be the spot on the, spot on the night. I mean, I just damn near just went. I damn near screamed to the top of my lungs when I saw that. Thank, thank God I didn't. I didn't want to get arrested. I was working on my neighbors. But then again, fuck my neighbors. I don't, I don't give a fuck about them. But this match was just. This is why AW got to be uh, over as hell with with uh, a lot of a lot of wrestling fans, especially me, because they're tag team match, tag team uh, wrestling. They have one of the best tag teams right now. Some of the best best tag teams with the Young Bucks, Loser Bros. You can say the best friends on on, on that on that uh, category. Private Party, uh, hell, even even the Dark, Dark Order. But of course. You have the Loser Bros retaining the tag team titles from Triple A, and there's no surprise there. I mean, I think they needed to win this match, in my opinion. But that's that's not the interesting thing that happened after the match. Some re some reason you have these two masked men uh, having the matches of dead presidents attacking both the Young Bucks and Loser Bros, and lo and behold. The two masked men, another that Santana and Ortiz, L A X. Holy fucking shit! Thank God they are in uh, AEW, not in fucking WWE. This is a big move for AEW. AEW officially has the best tag team on a f in the world right now when it comes to professional professor wrestling. And. It's funny because I made a, a trivia video for the uh, for LAX um, uh, today, like hours like hours before all out. A tribe I sent the A tribe Brown. He posts on a uh, on the PVO so YouTube channel. You can check that out on my my play, playlist on, on my channel. He did he posted that like a half an hour before the ladder match. Half an hour later, they end up end up being shown up being uh appearing on a. Uh, all, all out. I mean, it's like we're fucking psychic. Like, I had a feeling that guy, they got saw that AEW. He wanted me to do a, a video, just just talking about how 
he they he saying that he, they got they got they debut tonight last night at all out and they did. I mean, it's just I'm glad that they parted all uh, all league wrestling because I don't think they got they were they weren't surviving in you know, NXT or, or WWE in my opinion. I'm glad that they're in AEW. I think uh, for Chris Jericho's two missing opponents are, are been, have been revealed. I think the October 2nd, the first show on TNT, going to be the, the Elite versus Chris Jericho and LAX. And speaking of Chris Jericho, he was in the main event for the, for the AEW World Championship against Heyman Page. And Heyman, Heyman Page, he was definitely on his cowboy set tonight, uh, last night. Walking, coming out with a fucking horse. <laughs> he was riding a horse. I mean, as soon as I saw him riding a horse to the ring, I immediately had Old Town Road playing in my fucking head. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm very, you know, I'm real close to making a, a tribute video for Heyman Page using that song. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta be, I gotta post on the, on the, on my channel. On a PW Hosted channel, but I'm really close to doing that, doing the stream reveal using that song for Heyman Pays. But I like rest on that. Heyman Pays, Chris Jericho. It, I was, it, it was a bad match, it, but it wasn't like the best match of the night. I, I gotta, I gotta say that, say that much. Um, you have Chris Jericho blading, blading the hard way. Um. And you know the whole blood and guts uh, situation, uh, blood and guts uh, tagline is still flying around AW because that people saying that the only thing they they want they want to see is blood and guts, but that, that's not the case. We don't need to see blood and guts all the time in AEW. This was a, a a good match, but I think blood was it was it that is necessary in this match. Just, just me, I'm not black. I'm not mad because he bladed. I just don't really don't get why they they didn't have had the blood in, in the match, but that's just me. I like the referee in this match. I think that I think that I just found my found my new new favorite referee. <laughs> this chick was. See, I didn't see what the best part of this part of this match. I mean, the way she was selling the the the, the three counts, the way she was getting a crit jerker face, like <laughs> she is fucking awesome. And that I mean, I, I see why a lot of people compare her to like the, call her the female version of Earl Helpner. But that chick is that chick is also is awesome. I like that referee. See what the best part of this match. And as all of us predicted, as all as what all of us was kind of predicted that the entire time, Chris Jericho is your first ever. All Elite Wrestling World Champion. I mean, should we should we, should we be, be surprised? Should we be shocked that Chris Jericho is the first ever AW World Champion? No, we should not be shocked. We knew this 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 uh gonna be the outcome of Heyman Page versus Chris Jericho, because Heyman Page is not ready to be the World Champion for AEW, because. A lot of people were like, you know, oh well, um, Chris Jericho got to lose this match because he got to be going on tour with Fozzie. So the fuck what? Who cares if they going on? He going on tour with Fozzie. He's doesn't matter if he, he was on the tour with Fozzie or not. He was going to win this match because they need they need someone who is cal who who people know for years to have uh, the world championship. A lot of people know who Chris Jericho is. A lot of people know don't don't know who. At Hangman Pages, and that speaks volumes, because if people had see a Hangman Page with, with AEW World Championship, they probably got, you probably gonna see a lot of what the fuck memes and who the fuck is, is this guy. People don't know who who, who uh, Hangman Page is. A lot of people know who, who Chris Jericho is. Both the AEW fans and the casual fans who been watching him for years in WWE, WCW. New Japan Pro Wrestling, they know who he is. So, this is the right choice to have to put the belt on Chris Jericho. I don't care what, I don't care what anyone says. There was a, a good match. The right, I think the right man won. 
and I'm looking forward to seeing what next for Chris Jericho, who could be the next person stepping up to face the champion, Chris Jericho, down the road. And for all you champ, CM, CM Punk marks, fuck you. Because your president fucking CM Punk did not show up to All Out, and all you gotta do is piss him and complain about not him not showing up. And for that, I, I say fuck you for that. Fuck you. I didn't have had no, you know, thought in my mind that CM Punk got show up after the during the mat during the uh, All Out or, or after the uh, the main event match. That did not draw draw in my through my through my mind. So, for all you CM, CM Punk martyrs, especially Sean Street Entertainment, who constantly making videos about him returning to the WWE or returning to the ring, you can go fuck yourself. He never gonna come back to Western Wing. He never come back to WWE. Right that for damn sure. So keep on make, uh, getting your hopes up, having him uh, come back to wrestling for AEW. That's just that, that, that that's just me. Just saying. That's a, that is my review of the AEW all out. I know I've been you know been messing up with my words, but hell, I haven't had any sleep. Uh, that, that 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 must sleep. So cut me some slack. <laughs> But I want to know what you think down below. What do you think about All Out? Do you do you enjoy it? Do you hate it? Or and do you think it was bad? It was better than UK and NG UK Takeover. In my opinion, it was a little bit better than NG NG UK UK Takeover. I probably give this uh, event a uh, seven out of ten uh, or eight out of ten. But I just, I don't think it was a little bit. I don't it, I don't think it was better than um All All In. That that's just me. But it was a great show. Might be one of the best shows of the year. But let me know down below what you think about All Out. Like this video. Subscribe for more. Tap the bell on the YouTube. I didn't miss any of my videos. And make sure you check out my LAX tribute on the POV Hustle YouTube channel. I'll probably leave a link down below. Or you go go to my playlist and you check out from the POV Hustle. And you look, and you look, look for it on that way too. But in the meantime, hope you guys have a great... Labor Day weekend. I'm Michael Davis. Get your black. I'm out.